Snow Tracks is sponsored by Polaris, Think Outside, ski Snowmobiles, Yamaha, revs your heart, and by iPhone Lubricants, exclusively distributed by Parts Canada. When the Chaos first came out, it was like a little gift from heaven for a rider like myself. It was the perfect blend of mountain sled and off-trail free ride fun sled. This right here is a 2023 Skidoo Free Ride 850 Turbo R. This thing slaps you in the face like a half-baked salmon and just makes you go, oh my goodness, where did that power come from? We know that one of your favorite things as viewers of snow tracks that we do is shootouts slash Comparo stories. You love them. You like shootouts a lot more than Comparos. Um, so we thought it'd be interesting to bring you probably <laughs> the most equal comparison slash shootout story I think we've ever done with two sleds that are basically identical from different manufacturers. Yeah, this one is pretty lined up, pretty even. We got turbo to turbo. We got 36 inch ski to 36 inch ski width. We've got 154 to 155, three inch paddle, premium shocks on both. This has a belt drive and this one doesn't, but this one isn't offered in a belt drive. So really, and this one only comes with a belt drive. Exactly. So too bad. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, this is a very even comparison. It is. And I'm excited to shoot these two sleds out because these are the best of the best when it comes to that kind of playful mountain sled. So what do we got? We got a chaos slash 155 Patriot Boost, three inch, and we've got a free ride G5, G5 Turbo R, three inch, 154. So they are identical sets. They even both have the fancy touchscreen gauges. So they're as equal as they can be. And we both spent the better part of the last couple of days riding these two sleds. And something we did differently this time was that AJ and I rode them together and switched back and forth the whole time. Normally with mountain sleds, we end up going out one and one. We, one guy rides one, one guy rides the other. It's just efficiency. This time we actually swapped yeah. constantly and have some really good opinions we want to bring you guys. So without further ado, let's get started on... I think we got to talk about power first because these are turbos. I was going to start with ergonomics, but okay. <laughs> you in, we'll talk about it's power. It's the turbo. Okay, let's talk about power. What did you think about the power characteristics of both of these sleds. So when it comes to power, um, obviously for this year, the Turbo R is boosted up to 180 horsepower. Um, the, the Polaris, they don't give us the numbers, but we think it's somewhere in that range as well. My guess um, would be somewhere about 185, but okay. based on their math, but that's not yeah. official and I could be wrong. So. Yeah, so what I found to be the big difference between the two is the Polaris Patriot Boost, I find to be very smooth, very seamless. You almost can't tell that the turbo's there, to the point, in my opinion, that I actually would like to know that the turbo's there because I want to feel it kick in and grab. I but felt I, that it was a little bit soft. Yeah. When you first got on the throttle, it didn't rev up as fast as I thought it should rev up. It took a second. And I did find that on top end, when you were like three quarter throttle to full throttle, it had a lot of legs and it yeah. would just keep spinning and spinning. But down low, it didn't feel nearly as strong as what I thought, but especially as the Skidoo. Yeah, the Skidoo really pulls hard. It hits hard. It makes a lot of noise. Good noise. Uh, yeah, very good noise. It's it's turbo very, flutter like crazy. Yeah, very appealing. It makes you feel like the money you spent on that turbo was well <laughs> worth it. But more importantly than that, when you're in the deep powder and you get on the throttle, you know when this turbo has hit and it yeah. hits hard. And it's so, very snappy and it yes. spools up really quick. Like the track spin yeah. comes on immediately. Yeah, it feels like there is no resistance whatsoever. You're on the throttle, it's on the pipe and it's up on top of the snow. And in my opinion, calling this a shootout, I would pick the 
Skidoo Turbo R over the Patriot Boost. We're running at seven to 8,000 feet yep. today. And I really think this motor excels. And you get no arguments from me. After riding them back to back, the characteristics of that motor made me a better rider. Yep. This didn't make me a bad rider, yep. but I was better on that sled thanks to the power. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Hercules Tire. Ride at our strength. So ergonomically, I think you and I actually have some different preferences. Yeah, ergonomically, different. I feel very at home on the Chaos. I feel like it fits me, especially standing up. That's one area in this sled with these tall bars that when I stood up, I could stand up completely and not hunch over. I felt like when I was turning, the bars were right into my hips. But I will say this, there's a negative this sled has that I didn't even think about until I started thinking about this, this shootout. There's no bar riser on here. Yeah, no, there's not. So what do you do if you don't like the bar height? You buy a bar riser and a new bar. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much because like, you know, it's it's more complex than you think. Not only do you have to take all this junk off, but your grips have to come off, which are glued on. So you're basically buying new grips. To me, that's an actual oversight on Polaris's part because not everybody's the same size as evidenced by your preference for the ergonomics yeah, of that Yeah, we're sled. the same height. We're both six foot. We're similar size, but I feel at home on this sled. I feel like the handlebars are right where I want them. However, I have ridden with Brett Rasmussen who forced me to ride a snowmobile with a riser like this big. And so I'm used to something that's maybe not as um, as tall up. And I found this to be a little bit too tall for me. And truthfully, I've always loved the Polaris RMK ergonomics. They've always fit me really well, but the G5 and just the way that they've changed a few things, this fits perfectly for me. I felt right at home. Everything was just where I wanted it. It felt good when I was side hilling. My feet felt good moving over the seat. I really like the seat on this sled. I was just about to say that the yeah. seat is fantastic because it's never in your way. Yeah. Uh, this is a good seat. There's no question. This is a very good mountain seat. That's better. Yeah. Now it's not as comfortable on the trail. No. But when you're out in the mountains, there it never catches your foot getting on and off or changing from side to side. It's like it doesn't exist. And for a sled like these ones that are so playful and you're off the side, off both sides, spinning around, doing all the tricks that we can't do, uh, you want a seat that never gets in your way, and that one doesn't. What do we say for ergos? Well, there's another little aspect of this that we were just discussing. It's simple fit and finish of switch gear. And that's kind of one that Skidoo gets like hands, hands down. down. They're not afraid to like tool up a new switch gear every eight minutes, yeah. you know? Um, but it does come a long way when you look at the dashboard and the switch gear of that sled, it just looks very modern. And this just looks very dated. Yeah. Um, now I'm not sure that matters while you're riding and when you're side hilling, you're not looking at your switch gear going, boy, I'd be a better side hiller if this had new switch gear. But it is something when you spend 20 grand on a sled that you appreciate, right? Showroom appeal. Yeah. Are we gonna consider the gauge pod and the positioning of the gauge? Is that part of ergonomics or is it not? You know what? I think it's one of those ones where if it was a trail sled, I think it would be because you're looking down at your gauges on a trail sled, on a mountain sled, you really only stop to look at your gauge when you've stopped the snowmobile and you're wanting a reference point, whether right. it be your maps, whether it be, you know, seeing how much fuel you have or, or whatever it might be. Um, because on the Skidoo, it's really hard if you're riding down the trail. You can't see it. Yeah, you, you, just you just can't, can't see it. But in the same sense today, I had to roll both of these sleds over a couple yep. of times after getting stuck. And this snowmobile rolls over so much better and doesn't get in the way where this one, we actually had to contact a tree at one point. We had to bend the tree out of the way. And it was like, because oh, of man, the pod, just because of the pod yeah, sticking and, out. And I just feel like this is prone to get busted. There's it's a lot of money out there get broken. Yeah, it's an expensive piece. This gauge could be laid flat. It would make sense. And, and I do agree that when you think about a sled in the snow, that's, that system makes a lot more sense than yeah. this one does. This may not be prettier, but it's more functional. And when you're in the mountains, I think it's all about function. Definitely. So I think when it comes to ergonomics, we really can't say that there's a winner because I'm gonna give the Skidoo one point because this fits me properly. And you're gonna give the Polaris one point because it fits you properly. Yep. So I think that that's just a wash. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. So what's next? Okay, all right. How about handling? Handling is good. Handling is good, it's important. Which one do you like better? Honestly, I, I am going to tell you, I have been a diehard RMK fan for a lot of years. I have really fit well on that snowmobile. It has been my choice. Skidoo has stepped up with the G5 and I honestly feel at home on this sled like I did 
on some of the first gen revs when they were when they first came out you know but I mean, it's not just the bodywork there's differences no, it's elsewhere more than that, too yeah. right the rear, personally i think it all comes down to the rear suspension i think the the new longer rear torque arm and the different angle i mean we can go into the millimeters and all that stuff but really what it all comes down to is that it works better this is a chaos so this isn't an rmk this has a very yeah. different rear end than, a, than an rmk does yeah with a lot more weight transfer designed to wheelie, but this sled also has, of the two, the superior shock package with full adjustability on all four corners, position sensitive technology on all four corners, but it still doesn't ride as good as that does. Yep. And I thought that was really interesting. This should be tunable to be a much smoother ride, but it doesn't ride smoother. That no, Scudu has really, they've got this one set up right. For the first time in, like AJ said, the first time in a lot of years, I think the Skidoo actually might do it better. Handling goes to the skidoo for me. It goes to the skidoo for me too. Yeah. So. so the last thing we should probably talk about is simply just part spec and fit and finish. We yeah. gotta go over that. I mean, obviously Polaris has come a long way with fit and finish. There's no question they've improved big time. I like that you can take all the body work off with no tools. That's yeah. a great move. The I nice thing I will say is that Skidoo did update this. It's no longer like five different tools and 20 different fasteners. That's not, that's not a joke. That's what it oh, used to be. It was that and more. Now they've gone to four of the same Torx head bolts, and the little tool is right inside the front panel right here, hooked into the sled, and I actually took this thing apart today just to prove the fact that you could do it, and it took me maybe 10 minutes. So, yeah. I mean, is it's it not as good? better, no. but it's not a whole it's lot not worse. It's not like it, it used to be. Yeah, no, you know, when you look at the Polaris, of course, you've got your 7S display, which, in my opinion, is still superior to Skidoo's display, despite it built being bigger and fancier. This has built-in GPS, so you don't need anything but yeah. this to get where you're going and know where you're going. And in the mountains, that actually matters because you can get a long way from home, you could be in trouble. So you yeah. can trust this system more than that in the mountains. This is a great upgrade from what they had before. In fact, Absolutely. this is nowhere in the same atmosphere, stratosphere, planetary Anything system sphere. as the previous one. Yep. This is way better. I think that this is still the best. Yeah. Um, a couple other things that we need to talk about with, with comparison is that the Polaris has the slash tunnel. Mm -hmm. So it's not just short. They're both short tunnels. Mm -hmm. It's not just short, but it's actually tapered and it looks better. It does look but better. But it also actually functions better. It actually cuts through the snow even less right. than the square tunnel design does. And I don't know if they've patented it or what, but there's something about that that's an improvement. Um, so that's, that's a plus for Polaris over the Skidoo and, yeah. and that matters. However, Skidoo's got some new body panels that do some pretty impressive things. The body panels are awesome. They're functional. I mean, it turns the CVT essentially into a CVT like right off of a side-by-side. -side. So, sealed. Yeah, it's sealed. It's got a backer plate on it and it has an intake and an exhaust and the fins on the secondary actually pump air in and out. So to me, that's, that's a real premium feature. No more belt cooling issues. You're no. going to have a cool belt yeah. and it's going to work great. And it's one piece. It all comes yeah. off as one piece. No more pins to pull and jump Super like easy. that. I would say in technology, they both have Wait. their benefits shot yeah after doing what we do all day long in the mountains and doing this yeah. all day long i kid you not that makes your shoulder sore by the end so of the day skidoo promised when shot came out that it it saved you a measurable amount of energy over the course of a full day yes now today we were stuck quite a bit rolling sleds over starting and stopping when you're filming like we do with the film crew you're starting and stopping all the time Today, I actually noticed that without question that having yeah. shot made my life easier and I was yes. less tired. So to me, that's a huge, a huge upgrade that you just don't get here. <laughs> Finish and features, who wins? Well, I, I think there's a draw when it comes to features because both have good. I would still say the fit and finish. Skidoo has a better a better quality fit and finish. Their panels fit tighter, they're cleaner, the edges aren't don't have sharp edges or things sticking off. The Polaris is beautiful, don't get me wrong, and they've done a great job. But I do believe that Skidoo's fit and finish is still just one step above. I would give features to the Polaris and I would give fit and finish to the Skidoo. That's where yeah. I'd bet. Yeah. So again, I think that we're basically a draw in terms of fit and finish and features. It's just you can't pick one over the other. And that means that at the end of the day, I Who think this I think the Skidoo uh, quite handily won this one. I do too. And you know what? It's not because it's a brand new sled that they just came out with and we're going, oh, Skidoo's great because they came out with something new. No. It's because they came out with a sled That's better. that is refined. It's better. It is, it is better. They have refined a G4 and turned it in to a new snowmobile yep. and it is better. I'd still take either one. I flip a coin any day of the week and take either one and be happy with it. Yeah. But if, if I could pick one, just one, I'd be picking the Skidoo right now. I'm in the same boat. I think that they're both great snowmobiles. I wouldn't I wouldn't be upset if I bought either of them, but 
if I got on this sled after riding that snowmobile, I would go, oh, I feel a little bit more at home yep, here. And that's just, that's just the bottom line. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Arctic Cat Snowmobiles. The regions of Quebec by the sea. Discover our ride ideas. FXR Racing. Maximum versatility for all conditions. And by MBRP Performance Exhaust. Built for the victory lap. Having access to private recreational trails in the winter is amazing. Whether you're a landowner who loves to cross country ski, dog sled, or maybe you just want a safe and legal place for your kids to ride the mini sleds, or if you run a business that offers cross country skiing or fat biking trails, having private trails opens up so many opportunities for winter recreation. Problem with recreational trails in the winter time is that it's difficult to maintain them. Specifically, it's difficult to keep them smooth. For decades, people have been coming up with home-built contraptions, but pretty much all of them have very little effect. What is needed is a functional, durable, reliable, and cost-effective grooming solution that's also easy to tow with a wide variety of tracked vehicles. This is where snowgroomers.net comes in. They offer a vast array of small and compact snow grooming equipment for nearly every scenario. The groomers themselves come in varying widths for different size trails, and a long list of accessories and attachments are tailored specifically to different wintertime activities. With prices starting at $13.99 on the Pathmaster series, these groomers are not only extremely functional, but also extremely affordable. The snowgroomers.net website breaks down the full listing of products available within the four product groups. The Snowmaster 48, like we have here, is really a good option if you need a multi-purpose grooming solution though. At 48 inches wide, it can create smooth trails for just about any wintertime activity. In its most basic configuration, the Snowmaster 48 is considered a compaction groomer. This means it uses the chassis of the groomer with additional weights, if necessary, to compact and compress the snow. After it's compacted, the comb at the back leaves nice clean corduroy. This is a great setup if you're mostly working with softer snow or less bumpy or rutted up surfaces. If you're grooming higher traffic trails that do develop ruts and moguls, you can get the Snowmaster 48 Razor like we have here. It includes the snowgroomers.net razor blade attachment that is mounted in front of the chassis. Before you start grooming, it's important to go through a checklist to make sure the groomer is set up properly. And this starts with ensuring these draw bars are as level as possible with the transport wheels in their upright position. Next, move to the back of the groomer to the chassis or what is commonly referred to as the compaction pan. And with the use of the supplied magnetic angle base finder, adjust the level so that it is one to two degrees pitched upwards. This will ensure the best compaction, leaving the best corduroy finish. The final step in the process is lowering your razor blade so that it is just touching the top of the snow surface. Its function is pretty self-explanatory. The razor's blade cuts the top layer off the snow and separates it from the snow underneath, so the chassis of the groomer has soft snow to pack down. The razor does a great job of cutting the tops off moguls and creating a nice pile of snow in front of the chassis that fills in ruts before it's packed by the chassis itself. The Snowmaster 48 razor does a great job of creating smooth, well-packed trails for just about any kind of outdoor recreation. But cross-country ski trails require some special attention, and snowgroomers.net has this covered as well. If you're grooming trails specifically for classic style cross-country skiing, you can add the tractor attachment to the rear of your Snowmaster 48. This attachment leaves two perfect track paths in the snow and can be moved to either the left, center, or right position behind the comb. Or you can actually add two tractor attachments for double wide ski trails. Regardless of what purpose you have for your Snowmaster 48, this wheel kit is absolutely a necessity. It will allow you to not only tow the groomer over ungroomable surfaces, but it also allows you to back the groomer up on the trail without damaging the comb. Furthermore, it makes moving the groomer itself around your shop when it's not attached to a vehicle nearly effortless. The Snowmaster 48 has been designed and built by people who are passionate about grooming and creating the smoothest trails. It's literally covered in little touches that make grooming in the real world easier and more effective. 
For example, the chassis of the groomer has a tray for adding weight if you want to pack your trail more tightly. This tray is specifically sized for 8x8 inch landscaping tiles like you'd find on the walkway in front of your house. It has a cover that secures over them to maintain a clean and tidy appearance. The hitch section of the groomer includes a shear pin in case the groomer itself ever gets hung up on something. This will help prevent damage to the tow vehicle and the groomer. Shear pins are common on most snow removal equipment, but what's really thoughtful about the shear pin here is that it's simply a small finishing nail. It's completely effective, but more importantly, it's incredibly easy to find if you ever need one. Snowgroomers.net ships their grooming products all over the world. Assembly is easy and straightforward and is supported by both written instructions and YouTube videos that you can find on their dedicated YouTube channel. There you can also find videos with different setup and grooming tips and tricks to help you get the most out of whatever snow groomer you choose to purchase.